Hello everyone. Today we are going to be discussing about encephalitis. And uh, this encephalitis is very common uh, disease actually. So let us begin. So encephalitis actually let us start by defining the term. So definition. Just the definition is very simple. The definition of encephalitis is defined as inflammation of the brain. Inflammation of the brain. So unlike meningitis, which is inflammation of the covering of the brain, that is the meninges, right? So that is it. And then let us see there are many etiologies actually that causes this uh meningitis that there are many factors that causes the, that causes it one of the factor and the most important and the most common cause when we see etiology most common cause is actually viral infection viral viral etiology and then <coughs> The most important virus that uh, cause this is we have human simplex virus. So we have us have us have us simplex virus or HSV abbreviated as HSV. We have rabies rabies, rabies virus also causes encephalitis right uh, we have some time uh, measles in rare cases measles measles virus also causes this uh, encephalitis this is herpes sorry so we have bacterial cause number two bacterial etiology Bacterial etiology actually. Then the bacterial etiology occur also this uh, rare occasion like mycoplasma. Mycoplasma also cause encephalitis. Sometimes syphilis. That is tertiary infection if it involves the central nervous system. Then number three we have protozoal infection. Protozoa. Most important one question this is we have malaria, malarial parasite, we have toxoplasma gondi, toxoplasma gondi, question toxoplasmosis, right? So that is it. Which when we view the brain tissue on CT, we see a kind of intracerebral calcification, right? So that is it especially in newborn so this causes encephalitis even this hsv causes encephalitis very important cause of encephalitis in newborn actually so that is it then now we are going to see a kind of another etiology factor called autoimmune but this is very uh or, or, or rare occasion actually autoimmune autoimmune Auto, autoimmune factor so in this autoimmune factors actually uh, auto antibodies are made against a kind of uh, receptor in the brain called n methyl d aspartate receptor nmda abbreviation so Antibodies are made against these receptors actually. It's a kind of glutamate receptors actually. So excitation, this is a receptor that glutamate come and ex excite actually. So it's a kind of excitatory receptor actually. So a kind of antibodies are made against this receptor. So causing an inflammation and then eventually encephalitis, right? So the antibodies are called anti 
NMDA. And the individuals that have this autoimmune disease, that is autoimmune encephalitis, are also susceptible uh, to ovarian tumor, actually. Tumor. Susceptibility. <coughs> so that is it. Then now let us see the signs and symptoms. And uh, what we really have to know is signs and symptoms of encephalitis in adult is different from that of uh, manifestation that we see in children actually. So let us begin with that of the adult. Adult manifestation. In adult manifestation actually we have fever, we have headache, the patient will be complaining of headache, then we have confusion, in some cases seizures. So that is it. While in children, children manifestation, the symptoms are kind of because in some children, for example, infant, infant don't have the, 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 the mouse to actually say I'm having headache or whatsoever because he can't talk, right? So in most cases, the symptoms are a kind of some non-specific symptoms, actually. So some, the symptoms are a kind of irritability. Irritability. Poor appetite. So if there is poor appetite, there will going to be a kind of period to drive, right? So sometimes in children, even the meninges are involved. So you will see if the patient will, with stiff neck in some cases, actually. So that is it. So then with the fever. <clears throat> then let us see some kind of uh, complications of this encephalitis. Complications of this encephalitis actually number one are seizures. Sometimes it, it may cause a kind of paralysis, but temporary paralysis. Temporary. It may mimic stroke, especially in adult, and then a kind of hallucination. Hallucination, and then in some patients, especially if they are elder, elderly, they may uh, later in life they may a kind of uh, manifest with Parkinsonism symptoms. So the, this complication is called post-encephalitic. First encephalitic Parkinsonism. So they will manifest the symptoms of Parkinsonism. And these symptoms are bradyka bradykinesia, bradykinesia, and then rigidity, especially cogwheel rigidity, and then instability. Postural instability, instability, and then another uh, manifestation is tremor. So the, the patient will uh, manifest this uh, kind of uh, symptoms of Parkinsonism. So you really have to ask the history of encephalitis. Maybe it is not the real uh, Parkinsonism actually. So that is it. So now let us see the diagnosis. The diagnosis of this encephalitis is actually is actually a kind of clinical diagnosis. Diagnosis. Diagnosis is clinical based on symptoms. But for us to complete uh, to, to confirm the the diagnosis of encephalitis, we have to do some kind of laboratory test like lab test like lumbar puncture for CSF analysis that is CSF analysis sometimes blood blood culture sometimes PCR polymerase chain reaction or whatsoever 
So that is it. Then if we come to treatment, sometimes even CT can be used if we suspect the, the, the especially if it is a newborn, if you are suspecting the encephalitis to be caused by tosoplasmosis actually. So because in the, there is a, a kind of uh, intracerebral calcification. So that is it. And then the treatment depends on the etiology. If you suspect the 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 uh, etiology is due to virus, then antivirus has to be given. If bacteria, then antibacterial. Steroids are very very important. That's to reduce uh, the inflammation. And then, and so on actually. So this is end of uh, encephalitis actually. So thank you very much.